I'm going to hit record on this, and I'd love to hear your voice, man. And I'd love to hear your voice, man. What started out as looking for the truth grew into something larger than any of us could have ever imagined. Location after location, we discovered not only do spirits exist, but many of them want help. While objectively searching for more answers, we found we had the ability to communicate with the spirits ourselves. Using the latest technology available for paranormal research and combining it with our intuitive abilities, we attempt to help any spirit in need. Along the way, we sometimes encounter entities that aren't exactly nice. We deal with them as well. We are hope, helpers of paranormal entities. Throughout time, man has endlessly searched for the truth regarding the afterlife. In 1993, four psychic investigators in Skoll, England, conducted one of the most credible series of investigations known as the Skoll Experiment. The group recorded full sentences of spirits talking in a controlled environment and full images appearing on film that hadn't been opened yet. In 2012, Dr. Evan Alexander, a highly trained neurosurgeon, tells an incredible story of how he visited heaven and met the Divine Creator. He explains that this experience couldn't have been caused by chemicals in his brain as it was completely shut down for the seven days he was in a coma. History is filled with too many examples such as these to mention. We have all wondered at some point in our lives, what happens to us when we die? You either subscribe to the idea that once you die, that's it, it's over or that when you pass, your soul somehow moves on. No one truly knows for a fact what happens to us. After all the research conducted, testimonials given, countless investigations, mediums and TV shows, we still don't have a definitive answer. The bottom line is, none of us may never really know the truth until we die ourselves. Understanding the paranormal and what lies beyond is an ever-evolving process. We are not experts and don't claim to be. What we've been able to tap into is something that everybody has the ability to do, but most don't. I'm here. That's what I got. I'm talking about the intuitive part of ourselves. Allow us to show you using some of the best paranormal equipment available, how we are able to help spirits we communicate with using our abilities. I'm Josh, and with my other members Chris and Nikki, we are Hope, helpers of paranormal entities. Join us as our first order of business is to take on the South Florida State and Mental Hospital. Opened in 1957 and closed in 2001, this place is a hotbed for spirit activity and evil spirits. And while we go inside, we're going to try to help as many spirits as we possibly can. Standing with us right now is Robbie, the site coordinator for the last 35 years on this grounds. How you doing, Robbie? Oh, nice to meet you. Great yeah. to have you, man. Thank you for having us uh, here at the facility. Um, I wanted to ask you just a couple questions, if you can just tell me a little bit about the facility, when it opened and why it opened. And... Well, it opened, as you said, 1957. And this was to be the state-of-the-art 
new mental health treatment programs gotcha. to get away from the lobotomies where they were experimenting with new medications. Now, as far as uh, the paranormal goes, have you had any type of uh, experience with the paranormal or anything that you've heard or that you've experienced yourself? I've not experienced anything myself. Okay. I have heard uh, stories, uh, especially when this place was closing up and being privatized. Okay. Uh, they were moving from the, the old kitchen here to the new place okay and the head guy there said he went into the old kitchen he physically felt somebody push him in the chest push him physically physically okay he wouldn't go back in the building okay there's still people that will not go into this building they're scared of them. well we weren't and the first thing we did was head inside to scout for a location to set up this old mental hospital was like something out of a horror movie we headed down the eerie dark hallways where we found small crawl spaces that led to an old beauty parlor, even a rundown dentist office. We continued on through hallway after hallway until we found a centralized location and began setting up all of our gear. John went right to rigging up the four channel DVR and positioned cameras in the hallways and the morgue. Once everything looked good, Robbie escorted John, Chris, and myself over to a location I was anxious to revisit, the nurse's station. A few months prior, when Chris and I first met Robbie, we asked if we could film inside. He said yes, but apparently the spirit of a woman there didn't agree with him. We, so we're allowed to do any of the filming in any of this area here, to do any of the filming in any of this area. There was no one else in the building at the time of that recording, and upon returning to the same location, we pick up a similar voice telling us not to film. Uh, mark it. Got it. Okay. I decided to throw on one of the spirit boxes, the PSB-11, and we continued on with our walkthrough. We never know what we're going to pick up, and hearing and understanding these responses in real time is extremely difficult. But for as many spirits that we could feel that didn't want us there, we felt there were many that did. Josh, we've got Chris with us and John, and we're here to help. We have a device here that you can speak through. You have a voice. We're here out of love and care and respect. Does anyone want to try to come through here? We then asked Robbie to take us upstairs to the old operating rooms. While on the way there, we picked up some pretty good responses. Can you tell us your name? Can you tell us how many spirits are here? How many spirits are here? Who's in here with us? Robbie took us back downstairs to a place Chris and I were able to capture an orb on video the last time we were here. The morgue. As you can see, once Chris begins walking, a small light dips down cuts up, and then straightens out at the end. That was no bug, and dust doesn't do that. Inside, I continued to ask questions, trying to pick up more responses that we could use to try and identify any spirits looking for help, or any of the spirits that didn't want us there. We're about to go outside and review this information. Our job is not just to investigate, our job is to help you. Once we come back in here, we're going to have more information. We're going to bring some people 
that are going to be able to speak to you intuitively, including myself. How many are here with us? Can you say my name? My name is Josh. I heard Josh. Can you say the name Chris? How about John? Can you say John? Can you say John? I feel like you guys are answering me here. All right, well, when we go outside, you guys think about what it is that you want to say when we come back in. Be ready to go to a different place if you want. After we left the morgue, Chris and I went back to our base we set up in the hallway near the main entrance. We reviewed what was recorded up to that point, looking for any clue that might help us identify which spirits were inhabiting this old mental hospital. After hearing some of the responses we captured, we decided it was time to go and scout for a good location to conduct our crossover session. It is very important to understand, we don't know for sure if what we are getting is right. Being intuitive, which everyone has the ability to do, is not easy and a lot of the times, without the aid of different paranormal devices verifying what we get, we wouldn't truly know. Alright guys, we're here to help. We've investigated, we've tried to pick up your voices, we want you to be heard. But now is the time. Any spirit in this building that wants help, come down here right now. Gather around us. What are you picking up? Um, there's a woman here that is, you know, a higher of the energies, and uh, they call her the gatekeeper. There's, you know, many spirits here, but they, the the main one that's like keeps coming through that did the stuff on the pre-investigation is the gatekeeper. Okay. Um, Does she, she have a name? She got that name from the patients. The patients gave her that name, the gatekeeper. Is she here right now? Mm -hmm. Is she in the room? No. She's, She's outside? Yeah. My dear, would you, would you want to speak with us? Is it okay if we have your permission to be here? We want to help spirits. We want to help the, the souls that she you've been taking care of. She doesn't want to talk. Like She was treated like a, like a working horse. Like They would have her in here at night because they knew she was like a hard worker. But like they treated her like crap. Like They never paid her more. Well, I, you know what? Let's stop right now and let's, tell, let's stop and tell you the truth. The truth is that myself and this group appreciate what you've done in this building. She's just shooing it off. No, don't don't do that. Please. Take take this from what we're saying to you that we really care and that you deserve to be noticed. You deserve to be recognized. We would love if somehow, you know, if you were a nurse here and you were in charge. I don't know. She says she says save me for last. Okay. Okay. So Nikki, I want to ask. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, is is there a group? There's a group. Okay. Can I ask to speak to the spirit in the group that would like to lead this? Can to speak for the, you know, for the group? Who would like to speak for the group? Jacob. Jacob would. So you were a patient here? Yeah. He's saying that they used to, like, experiment with him in a way. Kind of. What did they do to you? They, they would tell me like I'm sick and they would strap me down like I was restraining and I wasn't. Um, he possibly was. He sounds crazy. And he seems crazy. Um, he says I wasn't acting crazy but they said I was so they would strap me down and I don't know why but something with his toenails and like his nails like they would like, I don't know if it was to get him to listen but they would do something with his nails where they would like pull them, like torture kind of. Where did this happen in this building? Upstairs. 
So Jacob, how many are in the group with you? Seven. Seven. We got seven earlier on the spirit box when we were in the morgue and I asked how many. It said clearly seven. We believe that there's a much better place for you to go. And if you're willing and you want, you can ask for that help and we can guide you and pray for you. Would you like to try that? I'm a little nervous. Don't be. We're here with you and we won't leave you until you leave. He's got to ask. Until you leave. So we're gonna, I'm going to ask you out loud. Be willing to try to feel love and ask, say, God, my higher power, whoever you may be, please come and help me. I'm ready to leave this place. Who's God? It's taking a long time. Who's we, God? We have a creator. We believe, we believe that we have a creator that created us. And he can do things for us if we ask him to help us. This isn't about religion. This is about spirituality. This is about spirituality. Even though you had such a tough life in this place, what is the most beautiful thing you could think of? My medicine before bed. <laughs> his medicine before bed. That was his higher power. Well, I can't ask you to ask a pill to help you out. It wasn't a pill, it was something in an IV. I don't know. It made you feel amazing, didn't it? Okay, picture that feeling times 10. That's what we believe this, this spirit of God that we're talking about. Can you imagine how amazing that would feel? You'll try. You can call your God whatever you want. I'll try. Okay, good. That's all you can do is be willing. That's all we're asking of you. So just be willing and say, God, I don't know you. I don't know who you are, but I want your help. I don't know why. I think because he's always been held behind closed doors and in a facility. He goes, a car's pulling up. A car's pulling up. It's a ride. It's a ride for me. It's my ride. It's your ride. It's a ride. It's a ride. And he's like in the doorway, like jumping up and down, like it's a ride, it's, it's a your ride. It's your time, man. It's your time to be released from this place. We are so happy for you. It's time to go, Jacob. He's like, he's like nervous because he's never left. So he's Put on like, your best he's clothes. like, can I go? You can go. You can go, man. That's what we're here for. My ride. Just give us a little something through the box, if you can, to let us know that you're leaving. He goes beep beep, like a car, like a car. Can you do it through? Feeling like we helped Jacob, it was time I tried to connect with the spirit myself. Hopefully we would be able to help another. All right. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to tap into Matthew myself if I can. And then, Chris, if you can take over and talk once I get him. So, Matthew, can, can you speak to me? Matthew, are you here with us? Yes, I'm here. Why are you here? Were you a patient? A very sick one. How long have you been here? I was here for close to 13 years. Well, do you understand that Jacob is gone now? Jacob has left. Do you want to leave like Jacob left? I heard him leave. I heard. He's free. I don't understand it though. I don't know where he went. Well, he went somewhere a lot better than a place to dread. Well, he went somewhere a lot better than a place to dread. Matthew, we can just jump right into it, man. I'm scared, but I will try. It's as simple as that, buddy. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You start, you start thinking about a higher power. Something that 
that connects you to a moment in your life where you felt so much happiness? Can you can you pick out a moment in your life where you felt overwhelming happiness? I remember my mother. I'll ask, but you stay here. Yeah, I'll be right here. We're not going anywhere. These people are telling me to ask. God help me. Please help me. I'm ready to go. Ask to feel that love that you felt with your mother. Just keep on asking. Go to the door, go to the window and look out and see if you see anybody calling for you. My mother's here. Go with your mother, man. <laughs> your mother's waiting on you. Is your mother there, Matthew? Leave that spot that you're standing in and go run towards your mother, man. After helping Jacob and Matthew, we decided to head back over to the morgue. Maybe there I could try and communicate with the gatekeeper again. Is there someone that would like to speak for the group? I'm trying to get a hand. Okay, Katie? Katie? How old are you, Katie? How old are you, Katie? Katie ended up being an easy case, as it didn't take her long to cross. I immediately tried connecting with the nurse that was called the gatekeeper. The nurse that I believe told us more than once we couldn't film at this hospital. And your name is starts with an M? You can call me Miss. Miss. Okay, I'll call you Miss. Miss, we're going to leave here soon. Here soon. And bye. before we... <laughs> All right. She said bye. All right. As you can see, she still wasn't in the mood to talk. So we left her to run her hospital. We packed up our stuff and headed out. Every time we leave a location, we declare no spirit can follow us and say a basic prayer for any remaining spirits there. All we can do is hope we've helped a few souls that needed it and pray we captured some of it as evidence. Now it's time to take on our next location, the extremely haunted Gulfstream Hotel in downtown Lake Worth, Florida. The Gulfstream Hotel. Built in 1923, this is one of the last grand hotels from the Roaring Twenties. With the type of history this place has had, it's no wonder many people have reported hearing or seeing something that they can't explain. Set to be fully renovated in a few weeks, currently a low-budget horror film is being shot in this location. So inside right now currently, there's a film crew that was awarded permission to go inside and film their feature film, which is a supernatural picture. And what we're going to do is, we're going to go in and we're going to interview them. Some of them have had experiences in hearing voices of a little girl, seeing shadows. So, we're going to go inside, we're going to interview them, and then we're going to conduct an investigation and try to help any spirits that need help. Before even stepping inside, while filming this segment, we seem to have picked up the voice of a young girl. No one was standing around us. It is believed when the hotel was being built, the young daughter of the construction foreman fell to her death down the elevator shaft. One of the crew members working on the film being shot here believes the spirit of the little girl has revealed herself to him and the others. As we walk into the lobby of this grand hotel that was added to the National Registry of Historic Places in 1983, we can't help but feel we stepped back in time. With the open lobby and tapestries hanging from the pillars, 
we noticed pictures and antiques that no doubt hold energy of their own. The elevator, the first in the town of Lake Worth, sits there, out of service with caution tape, almost as if the tragedy with the little girl just happened. We make our way up the stairs to meet Jason Wool, the crew member who has experienced the girl firsthand. As we meet him, he takes us up to the fifth floor where the door is kept shut with a screw. As he walks us down the eerie hallways, we see the dilapidated rooms. We choose one and set up. So, Jason, it is, right? That is me. Really quickly, what is your position here on uh, the, uh, the feature film? I am a line producer slash locations manager. Very cool. So a lot of responsibility falls on you. Pretty much. Keeping this uh, ball rolling. Very cool. Um, so we're here. We're here in the Gulfstream uh, Hotel. We're on the fifth floor. And um, downstairs earlier, you were just briefly kind of telling me a little bit about your experience. If you could, just explain to me what you've been experiencing since you've been here filming. I definitely have seen her twice, fully. The little girl. She's a six-year-old little girl. Okay. The one time I clear as day saw her, that I believe that this is the bedroom that she probably originally stayed in. Right here. And 517? 517. Okay. She was a little girl before she died. Okay. But for some reason, I guess so much stuff goes on in the hotel, she's picked another little area that's really out of the way in this quadrant right down over there in the basement. Okay. That is her area and that's downstairs downstairs okay. the i've been the first two times i got a actual physical tour around this hotel mm -hmm. by the owners and by the people that run this place that entire area was missed we never were going to shoot over there no i didn't even know it existed mm -hmm. and then i stumbled upon it the second time I was in there, I got completely turned around, and then I went into her room, which I call her room, and I clearly saw a silhouette, kind of bluish tint of a bed, and her just sitting on the bed in like a 1930s kind of nightgown holding a dog. Okay. And wow. I clearly, I, I it's just yeah, something you can see the hairs on the end of my arms raising right now. It's just. That's the way it is. Right, right. Well, that's great. That's great. So, in a little bit, we can get you to show us downstairs where that, uh, where that room is. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, we're going to go ahead and do a, uh, a simple investigation with the spirit box and the Frank's box for about 15 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and review that information um, and try to see what I pick up from there. After that, then we're going to kind of get into even a more session um, and ask some more specific questions and see, uh, as intuitive communicators, what we pick up. I take a few minutes to set up the camera and turn on the PSB7 spirit box. We will also be testing out the SLS X cam as well. All right. So, for any spirit that's here, um, my name is Josh. This is Chris and this is Nikki. We're here to help. All right, we're here out of love. We're here to help and find out who's here. If anyone can come through and identify themselves through this device, that would help. We're going to listen to it, I'm going to find out, and then I'm going to be able to help. Be able to help. Now I know there's reports of a little girl here. Is she here? Can you tell me her name? What we're here to do is help. If there's any spirit that doesn't want to talk to us, that's okay. You don't have to. But don't ruin it for the others that actually do want to get help. Alright? We're here out of respect. We have love and care. Can anyone tell me this little girl's name? We felt like we weren't getting much through the spirit box and decided to walk down the hall to room 517. 
the room Jason felt the little girl had stayed in before, other than the place he described downstairs. There's a lot of spirits here, I'm sure, that live here and make this place their home. I'm sure there's spirits that want to stay here. But you're going to go through some kind of turmoil and a little bit of uprooting here once they start this. If anyone wants to help, this is your time to talk. You have a voice. You can be heard. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take about 10 minutes and listen to what we just picked up. See if there's anything that we can go ahead and uh, decipher from that. That way I can ask a little bit more specific questions. Trying to do a thorough review in a place with no air conditioning is pretty difficult. So I felt it was time to try our luck with the SLS XCAM. done is we've just broken off from the other crew members, all the other cameras, Chris and everyone else. It's just Nikki and I and what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if we can get you know more uh, activity when we have less people. So we don't have any of the other mics, we have just the mic on here, just the GoPro and then we have the XLS. Almost immediately an anomaly is detected. Whoever's up here, we invite you to show yourself. Okay? We're here to help. We're kind, loving spirits. Can anyone appear? Look at this. We got someone right here. Who's this? We see you. You're pretty close. Can I get you to move off the wall? If that's you, if that's someone, can I get you to move off the wall? Now we don't know, you know, we don't know if this is someone or not. We see the camera, okay, so he's gone now. Whoever that was, I really appreciate you showing up. There's nothing on this panel or this door that would show that, you know, resemble a human figure so it, we, we see that sometimes with lamps and different posts and things like that that might maybe set it off or we can maybe explain it from that but we've got some other outside voices here from the other crew members I believe from the film. We joined back up with Chris and the crew and headed over to the elevators. I let the box run. Some of you said to leave. I understand <laughs> Who's up here right now with us? There's like one male. There's like one main male that's like really aggressive and way more powerful than all the rest. Okay. And then there's like uh, another male that's lower than him, which would be weaker in energy wise, I guess you could say. And then there is just like I think it's because of us doing all of this stuff that there's some outsides coming in. Okay. But for the most part, other than the girl, it's two males. Two males. One higher, one lower, energy wise. Okay. So are they are they angry? Or are they mad? Or are they the higher one. The is, higher yeah. one. Is. What is his deal? What does he want? He's just here. He's just stuck. And, you, and does he not want us here? No. I could immediately feel the static electricity of these male spirits. Man, my hair is standing up real quick. So what's his name? <laughs> 
Michael? No. What is his name? Can you tell us your name? The one that's the most powerful here? Peter. Peter. Is that your name, Peter? Is that right? I'm Peter. That's what I got. We don't have any anger towards you. I don't know why you have anger, but it's okay. You're entitled to your anger if you want to keep it. But it's a miserable existence even in the afterlife. He's down the hall. He's gone. He's gone. Okay. He's here. He's down the hall. Well, then you can go ahead and watch us do what we do. But don't try to interfere with any of the spirits that we're trying to help. I'm waiting for you to try to get the little girl. And why? What are you going to do? What are you waiting for? She's mine. She comes with us. She stays at the property. Listen to me right now, Peter. I'm going to tell you right now. I am not going to tolerate any type of spirit bullying in any way. We will let you be here if you want to be here. But my higher power allows us to remove any troubling spirit that's keeping us from doing the work that we need to do. So you want to observe, you observe. But I am very serious right now. I will not tolerate you messing with a little girl. After talking with this angry spirit named Peter, we pack up our stuff and head back down the hall to meet up with Jason. We wanted to try and help the spirit of this little girl. Everything in this place has a dark and dismal feel to it. We meet up with Jason in the kitchen as he shows us the place he feels the girl spends most of her time. I don't know how that got torn down, but that was up there, and she feels very safe down here because okay. this is people don't come up here. There's a lot going on in the hotel with the um, demolition and so forth and so on. Oh, that's so nice of you to that stuff. Yeah, it really is, man. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Yeah. I figured they had Barbie in the 30s, because we know what Barbie was, right? Yeah. And then that's actually a magazine from the 2025. We're down here in the spot that uh, the crew, other crew members uh, have seen her. They've left her some nice items, which is really cool. Uh, I think that's great that they've done that. And they're aware of her and shown her some real love. Um, and Nikki has picked up on the fact that she's down here. So Nikki, is she here? She's here. Okay. What's her name? Maggie? I don't know why. You're getting a Maggie? Yeah. And you, 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 is that right? Can you confirm if your name is Maggie, sweetie? How old are you? How old are you? Can you tell us your age? What's your age? I'm getting seven. So you know we're here to help you. She said she's gone home with you a few times. Who, with Jason? She followed me. Oh, yeah. She did. Okay. She said I've gone home with you. Have you noticed that you're in bed? Okay. Okay, that's nice. That's nice that you did that. She said I wasn't being scary. No, I don't find her scary at all. That's, that's really nice. So you can leave the property, but you come back here, though, when it's time to come back. She's actually never left before. So this was, you're the only one that's acknowledged yeah. That's really nice, man. It's really cool. It makes a big difference, and, and you know it more than anybody. Um, let me ask you something. It's Maggie, right? That's what I'm getting, yeah. Mag that's what I'm getting, yeah. Mag did you say Maggie? I think it did. All right. Yep. Did you say Maggie? I think it did. Alright. 
Yep. All right. Yep, I'm Maggie. I'm Maggie. Okay, good. Good confirm. Good confirm, sweetie. Wow. All right, so listen, let me ask you a question. Do you want to stay here? No. 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 Okay, so then you want to leave then. Is the man here? Is he messing with you? Is anyone he's messing? Around the hall. He's in there. Is that a kitchen? Okay. He's in there. So Peter, I'm going to tell you that you need to stay in there. She feels safe though. She's not threatened. Good. But she's like, he's out there. Okay. So listen, Maggie. I'm going to ask you a question. This is going to be a beautiful night for you. You don't have to stay here. I'm going to ask you. Uh, did you did you fall down the elevator like they said? Yeah, your dad was working on the elevator and, and, you, and, you, and you fell down it? I think it was only from like the first floor. It was just... The, it said first flight. Like I think they're trying to talk about stairs. But I think it was like from the first or second floor. Like it wasn't that far. Did your parents ever talk to you about a higher power or God? God, have you ever thought about maybe talking to him or, or praying to him, asking him for help? If she, I, I feel like she doesn't know, like she knows that she's dead, but she doesn't. So like she's kind of hung around here because she's thinking that her parents are looking for her. That's exactly the same thing. But they're I not look, they're not not looking for her. But she's like, if I leave, my mom and dad won't know where I went. I'm gonna suggest to you the only way that we know how to help any spirit be able to go to a much better place where you belong. All right, in, in, in a much better place where you belong. All right, in, 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 it's, it's kind of like. Being a little cleaned up, she wasn't bloody or messy, but she just looked a little raggedy. Right. But she's like all cleaned up, and her hair's brushed, and she's like now in like a white dress. Yeah, that's what I saw her. When I saw her here, she never, she no blood, no anything. No. I agree with yeah. you on that. It just was. It was so, eternal injuries, and there was no really blood. Some is right. I'm with you on that. I feel that too. Okay, so listen, Maggie, I'm going to have you do this right now. I'm going to walk you through this, okay? We're going to have you ask out loud. Did you ever hear the name? I'm going to suggest someone. I mean, I don't know what God that you... Jesus? Yes. So, Jesus, will you... Would you feel comfortable asking for Jesus to come help you? Okay. Okay. She's still nervous. She's like, is it okay though with my parents? She doesn't even know her parents are dead. Your parents are right. going to be there to meet you. Your parents are going to be there to greet you when you cross over. Okay? When you cross over. Nikki senses Peter interfering. Peter, you cannot stop anything. Please don't make me have to deal with you first before we help this little girl. I know you want to stop this, but you can't. You cannot stop the will of God and try and help his children. You are one of his children as well. If you want help, we can help you. But please do not interfere with this process. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Who's it? What, who's saying that? Peter. Peter's saying it? Yeah. Peter, we'll deal with you after. But do not interfere with this process. I order you in the name of Jesus Christ that you cannot interfere with this process. You understand? It has fear with this process. You understand? I'm sick. I know, I am. I'm very sick. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you come and help this, this little girl, this child of yours. Come take her home, come take her out of this place. She's been here. Take her home, come take her out of this place. She's been here too long, Lord. We trust in you. We ask you to help. She's leaving. Can you confirm, Maggie? Can you say something, Maggie, through here, though? Just that you're leaving? I am an angel. I am an angel. I heard that voice come through. All right. 
Let's reset the cam uh, cameras real quick. I think we breathe this time. I know, I know. Oh, Maggie. Look at that. God bless you, Maggie. Let's see. It felt good to help the spirit of Maggie and confirm for Jason what he already knew. We left Peter on the fifth floor to await the full renovation of the hotel as he was unwilling to receive any help. For us, it was another night of being able to help spirits as we are helpers of paranormal entities.